Okay, so in the 1950s, people went kind of mad. It was the beginning of the Cold War in between the United States and the USSR, and, well, people were scared. With the development of nuclear technology, it's certain that if a conflict were to erupt, it would ensure mad, mutually assured destruction. The Cold War was not a war on its primary sense. It was an ideological, cultural, and technological war. Two powerful forces were clashing not with weapons, but in sports, economics, allyship with independent colonies, chess, communications, astronomy, philosophy, you name it. One of the aspects that was fought on was cinema. Cinema, and even entertainment as a whole, was used to communicate a certain message that the other side is your enemy. The governments used films to project their fear onto their citizens. In the United States, this phenomenon was called the Red Scare. Today, I wanted to take a look into how Hollywood films depicted the USSR and communism, and also examine why it might still be relevant today more than you might think. I will present two films, The Blob from 1958, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and a short film called Red Nightmare. Just a warning, I'll be spoiling these films slightly, so if you really really wanted to watch The Blob, now's your chance to go watch it. Dave! Doc Hallen's been killed. Doc Hallen? What happened? It's over at his place. You gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. Well, what was it? Stop with it, kid. But it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. It... Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. The first film I'd like to examine is called The Blob, starring Steve McQueen and, quote, a cast of exciting young people. It's the story of a gooey monster that arrives in a small suburban American town and starts to englobe its citizens. The more citizens it consumes, the more it grows. At the end of the film, the blob is huge and englobes an entire diner. The unified power of the citizens defeats the blob with fire extinguishers. Okay, I'm recording this while I'm editing this video, and I was really confused with why they use fire extinguishers, but now it makes complete sense in my head. They defeat the blob using coal, right? Well, it's because it's during the cold war. In conclusion, the film needs more blob. As you might have guessed due to the context of this video, the red blob is an allegory of the ideology of communism and its threat towards the western capitalist world. Obviously, the color red is not a coincidence. Red is the color that links itself to communism due to the communist flag, for instance. In fact, most leftist symbols use red as their primary color. The description of the movie even describes the blob as being an invader, symbolizing the fear that is felt towards a possible invasion by the USSR. The scene where the blob arrives is very similar to what a bomb would sound and look like if it were to appear in the sky. That same idea of a bombing is repeated in the scene where the emergency alarm is started. Finally, it drives a divide in American society 
just like the next film does. But will you tell these fools I'm not crazy? Make them listen to me before it's too late! Listen to me. Please listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! The next film is called Invasion of the Body Snatchers and it was made in 1956. It's the story of a man in a small rural American town. Slowly he realizes that the people in the city are starting to change. At first it's called off as mass hysteria by the doctors. However the main characters discover duplicates of themselves in the basement that are contained in alien pods. They realize the inhabitants have all been transformed into duplicates that are devoid of humanity. The crew tries to escape to a nearby city but they run into a truck full of pods with duplicates meaning that other cities have been contaminated already. At the end the authorities find out, the police block the roads and the FBI intervenes. This film portrays individualism under siege being replaced by a collective hive mind, aka communism, or how America portrays communism to be. It's about showing how communism means the loss of choice, freedom, and individuality. It also plays into the notion of Soviet spies. The fact that anyone close to you can be a replica, or in our case, a spy, encourages you to be skeptical of those around you and denounce them if needed. This is once again the divide in between the American people during the Cold War. Now some might say that this is far-fetched, but the film is considered by many experts to be a political allegory. The reason why filmmakers would use allegories and symbols in their films is because they feared being blacklisted. This was basically being banned because they produced certain films containing messages of societal critique of the capitalist world, for instance. People that did do films like that, such as Charlie Chaplin with Monsieur Verdoux, were deemed communist and banned from the movie industry or even the United States as a whole. Therefore, filmmakers turned to implicit messages instead of direct ones. However, there were still certain films that were unapologetically anti-communist. The next film is a good example of that. I want you to meet Jerry Donovan. He's proud of his country, but prone to take his liberties for granted. And he's aware that someone must assume responsibility for those liberties, for our free way of life. Yet, when there's a job to be done, Jerry, like so many Americans, is apt to ask, why me? <laughs> Finally, I wanted to examine a short called Red Nightmare that was created in 1962. While the other films represented communism in a more symbolic way, this movie does so in a very literal way. It shows the good values of the American family. You know, religious values. You two are going to Sunday school and you're going right now. Consumerism. Besides, Wednesday's my bowling night. Oh, Jerry, can't you think of anything besides bowling and then television? And misogyny. Oh, Daddy, Mother, we want to get married. Four or five years. In four or five years? There's a big dichotomy in between the good family life and the authoritarian rule of the communists. Sure, the USSR did have its issues with authoritarianism, but the way it's presented in the film is simply comical. The main character wakes up in a nightmare, a red nightmare, where freedom has suddenly vanished. He needs a permit to use the phone. He is obligated to talk in a parent's teacher's conference. He has a work quota, 
even though that's something that's found in capitalism as well. I could go on and on nitpicking this film by saying that its details are not right, but I think you get the point. The movie depicts communism as this weird horrible place to be and uses examples that just aren't factual. There are some critiques to be found with the USSR, but being forced to go to a parents teachers conference is definitely not one of them. This is how effective the Red Scare was. It still heavily impacts the political landscape presently. This was largely done by all the forms of media that kept scaring people that everything slightly more to the left than pure capitalism, like welfare, was communism. Whenever you hear Trump say that the Democrats are communists or people calling any form of control like a COVID passport Chinese communist, it's to appeal to this generation of people that are so scared of communism. In conclusion, the Red Scare is the notion of making people scared of communism by depicting it as a truly awful and authoritarian ideology. This was propagated through various cultural mediums, including cinema. Films such as The Blob, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and Red Nightmare have really driven forwards the idea that communism is a collective hive mind with no liberty that could invade America at any second. The Red Scare is still present today since people that grew up with it, notably the boomer generation, are still influenced politically by it. I want to finish off by saying, don't base your political opinions on movies alone, and actually do some research on ideologies such as communism. The directors of these movies have their own biases, and that manifests into what they're representing on the screen. That's it for me, thanks for watching.